Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Heartland Franchise Guy, your insider's guide to franchises in the Heartland area. I'm Blake Martin, your Heartland Franchise Guy. This is the place for education, resources, and advocacy for our local franchising field and for local entrepreneurs looking to learn about the franchising field. Now, many of you know that this podcast is not about promoting any particular franchise concept. That's not what we're here for. Rather, it's about creating awareness within the franchising industry overall, particularly for folks in this region. That said, when we see something, a concept, that can be categorized as a true legitimate first mover advantage and a franchise concept within a proven established industry that's been around for nearly 100 years, that is education we want to share. That's awareness we want people to be aware of. And that brings us to today's session and today's guests. We're talking about a European-based concept that we've just never really seen anything exactly like this before. It's car wash meets Uber meets Earth Day who we have with us today to help us understand what that is all about and break down those three elements I just provided to you, is the Director of Franchise Development for the team responsible to grow this European-based concept across the U.S. Mike Sampson, thank you so much for joining us today. It is my pleasure, Blake. I appreciate you bringing me on board. Absolutely. Hey, why don't we start? You want to give me a minute or two on your background? Yeah, I'd love to. Uh, My background starts in retail. For probably 20 years, uh, I spent time uh, between either Best Buy or uh, T-Mobile dealer, uh, multi-unit level, right? I was running uh, either districts or areas across uh, North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, Wisconsin. And, uh, you know, I got to the point where I'd gone through my fifth or sixth reorg, uh, Blake, and I I'd had enough, right? I didn't uh, appreciate other people controlling my family's livelihood and my fate and uh, I just had that fateful conversation with a friend one day. Uh, he happened to be a VP in the franchise industry. And two days later, I was on a plane uh, interviewing uh, for one of the brands I represented. So uh, I haven't looked back. I've been in the industry now for about six or seven years, um, working on uh, now my fourth brand in the industry. I think that's very fortuitous. So your your path is very similar to probably the path of a lot of folks that you're helping to educate as you're working them through the education process on franchise opportunities. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, it's just about without fail. I understand the story I hear when I talk to you know candidates that are looking for uh, what their next step is. And some of them are going to stay in their current job, but they see the change coming. So they want to get ahead of it. Others that just, you know, had enough and, and they want to make the jump now, uh, or they were forced to make the jump now, right? Through a reorg or, right, uh, right. you know, uh, you know, so we spend a lot of the time uh, when I'm talking to candidates just on that and our shared background and what I've learned since I've been in the industry for six or seven years. So, uh, yeah, I can relate. <laughs> Let's just say. It's a big life decision. So you better be relatable. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, let's jump into the meat of this thing. Sure. Um, I, I presented it as car wash meets Uber meets Earth Day. So let's start on that first piece there. When you first described this opportunity to me, this franchise opportunity, um, you referred to it as dry cleaning for autos or buses or planes. You want to detail that a little bit more for me? Yeah, sure. So, you know, the car industry or the car wash industry today is centered around taking the car to a car wash. Uh, right. Whether a brick and mortar, right, a standalone car wash kind of detailing uh, location, or attached to a gas station, mm-hmm. right? they're all over the place. Right. W- what our model is built on is flipping that around and taking the car wash to the car. So because we don't use any water, right? Uh, we're 100 biodegradable. We don't need any electricity. We don't need any hoses. We don't need any drainage. Uh, it opens up a lot more opportunities for us to go where cars are parking. And it's a hundred percent a convenience play for us to go uh, to retail centers, malls, corporate locations, professional buildings, um, any place, uh, you know, parking garages, as an example, airports, and we can bring our service to where the cars are. Uh, and then the dry cleaning piece is there's no water, right? So our, our solution uh, is proprietary, right? So I'm not going to get into the, uh, the formulas that we use, 
Uh, <laughs> but it's very simple. You know, we spray it across the car. Uh, the solution uh, it adheres to the dirt or the salt or the sand or the road grime. And then the cloth we use to clean it uh, wipes the dirt right off. So uh, literally you could be getting your car done right now, Blake, because we're having this phone call. That's how easy it is uh, for us to take it wherever the cars are. Okay. Walk me through that again. So where does it go? The dirt, I mean? Yeah. So the spray in the yep. solution has a positive charge. So when you spray it on the car, it'll attach to the dirt, whether it's salt or sand or whatever the road grime is, and, and it attaches to that dirt. The rag we use has a negative charge. It's a microfiber cloth. And when we take that across the car, it, it just like a magnet sucks up into the rag. So we use that rag till it's dirty. We grab another one and just keep wiping the car down. So there is no runoff or drainage or soap. It's okay. all pulled up right into that rag which goes part and parcel into the other piece there, that Earth Day piece. So we'll circle back nope. to that. It nope. sounds like there's a, you're minimizing some of the pollution. So part of what I heard you say there also was, uh, you know, kind of leveraging the, the experience economy, the convenience economy by flipping things around. And it's, it's the car wash, even though it's not a wash in the traditional sense, but it's a car wash that's coming to you. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And, and really, it's a full detail experience. So, you know, we'll talk about dry cleaning for cars. Um, it's bumper to bumper inside and out of the vehicle. So, you know, we can do a basic wash in 15 minutes or less, uh, or we can do a full detail. Um, and, you know, so when we set up a, a service for a customer, yeah. there's like six or seven different levels of, of cleanliness or, or uh, cleaning options we can provide depending on what they want. Um, so it, it's not just a car wash per se. It's really a, a full level detail service. that we Okay. Bring. Okay. So more than a car wash, car yeah, wash plus. Absolutely. absolutely. Gotcha. Now back to that earth day reference. So sure. another thing that you mentioned when we were first talking about this was with the waterless component, the industry estimates for the typical car wash are something like 35 gallons per car wash. Is that right? It is. Yeah. So you use about 35 gallons of water minimum when you take your car through the wash. Okay. Yep. Um, I did some research. You could Google this. Uh, there's a census uh, study out there shows we do about 8 million cars a day through a standard car wash in the U S okay. You start doing that math. You got 280 million gallons of water cycling through car washes here in the United States. Um, and then not to mention the soap that goes with that, the chemicals that go with it, uh, and just the electricity to power the actual car wash. Oh itself. yeah. Yeah. Um, all that gets eliminated with our product, uh, at our locations, we, we have, uh, vacuums obviously to do the detailing and, you know, different detailing tools, uh -huh. uh, but, but they're battery powered, they can be rechargeable, right? So there, there's no electric, uh, or electricity needed at the locations, and then the product itself is 100% biodegradable, uh, and uh, we're not using any water to wash. So it, it completely eliminates all the, uh, I guess, the negative things that you would think about to the environment with a traditional car wash. Uh, all that goes away with our product. That is fascinating. And I was about to take that in a little different direction, but I hadn't even considered what you just talked about there. My back of the envelope math, and, and uh, I am not... A mathematician, so follow me really carefully here. <laughs> My back of the envelope was this: this started in Ireland, in Europe, right? And there's globally, there's roughly sixty franchises around the world. Yeah, sixty territories around the world. Uh, okay. We have four franchisees in the U.S. Uh -huh. uh, we just getting started, uh, but this model actually started in 2007 in Ireland. Um, so it's been around a while. Gotcha. gotcha. And so even if we were being conservative and saying with those locations and each one was doing 10 washes a day, 300 days a year, and it was 35 gallons of water that you're saving, that's it's a little bit above 6 million gallons of water saved a year just from the existing locations. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. And, and one thing that we'll do actually is we'll track that. And Do we want to make sure at our location, we can track how many gallons of water we can serve so that then our partners that we're working with, whether it be our um, 
retail centers we're in or our professional buildings or you mm-hmm. know the mall that we're in, they'll be able to see, hey, because we're here, you know, here's how many gallons of water we've conserved just by, you know, being here a month, two months, six months, a year. And then they can share that in their community so that people can see what kind of work we're doing. Oh, that's that that's a great way to connect with those folks that are looking to start a business or another business, uh, but they want to make a real impact in the community. Yeah. A lot of the individuals that I'm talking to right now, um, one of the things they'll tell me, because we'll always have a conversation, like, what are you looking for in a franchise? What are those Mm -hmm. boxes you're looking to check? And I hear over and over again, they want something that makes a difference. Um, And, you know, they want to be good citizens of the planet. You know, this absolutely uh, not only financially checks that box for someone that's looking for a, a good model, but on the environment side as well, it, it checks that box for them. Yeah. Yeah. Now the Uber piece of this, um, sure. it's this, this is app based, correct? Yeah. So we have three revenue streams or three components to our op model. Uh, the first is we're going to have a pop-up tent. Okay. It'll go in a parking lot. It's massive. You can't miss it. It's a huge marketing tool and we'll go into any number of parking lots where cars are are there for a significant amount of time Mm -hmm. and set up shop. So a mall is what everybody can relate to right away. Mm -hmm. I'm in Minneapolis. We might go to the mall of America, right. As an, as an example. And just like you negotiate lease space on the inside of the mall, we do it on the outside, right? So we uh, negotiate a lease for a couple spots in the parking lot and then we target anybody that's driving in the park, right? So that, that's number one is we'll go set up shop outside with our pop-up tent. Uh, number two is we'll go into corporate America. So think Fortune 500 companies. We might go into an Apple location or, or to, you know, target a Best Buy or 3M or Target. Um, anywhere where they have uh, underground parking or covered parking, uh, set up shop. And then the employees that work there uh, will be able to use our service. Okay. Um, you know, so that's number two. Are those employers that, and, using that as a perk? Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, the, you could have the employer cover that cost for the employees. They could buy down a discount. Mm-hmm. But just the fact that we're there, it's the convenience play for those employees. Most of the places that we'll go, everybody's time starved. Yeah. So think if we showed up at a medical center and came there two, three, four days a week, and just marketed to the doctors and the nurses and the professional staff, they don't have time, you know, for, so them to get their car completely detailed while they're at work and they don't have to worry about it is a huge advantage for them. Right. So we're going to those places where uh, there's professionals working and they're time starved and they're going to really love a a service like this. Uh, And then the third part of our business model you mentioned is the on demand. So, you know, you can kind of think the Uber model, uh, we have an app that you can download. You could go to the you know Play Store right now and download it on your phone. Uh, in your area, you can flip it on, and and you'll have a Uber team that can drive around and go to where you are or where our customers are. So you know, I kind of joked at the beginning of our conversation, you could have scheduled a car wash, you know, right now, and they could be washing and detailing your car right. while you're working and, and leading this podcast. So. Uh, that's the third uh, revenue stream or part of our business model, um, which allows us to cover kind of all our bases. We can go uh, to the parking centers where people are at. We can go to the corporate locations where people are at. We can go to airports, uh, and then we can actually go into your home uh, and clean it right in your driveway or your garage if you want us to. This is disruptive. Are you yeah. are you getting inquiries from for a franchise territory? Are you getting inquiries from folks who are current owners of traditional car washes? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. The, um, so we actually have a franchisee in our system currently who owns three traditional car washes and it's pretty much moved his entire business model over to just scaling no H2O. Yeah. Uh, for obvious reasons, you know, when you start looking at a car wash, you're in that 3 million, 4 million, 5 million range just to get open. Um, you know, we're, significantly less than that, um, by a long shot, you know, about 150,000 or less gets our concept open, uh, in your territory. So, uh, yeah, we get a lot of interest from people that are in the car wash industry. Um, for sure. One twentieth the cost again, 
counting on me knowing math well. That's, that, uh, that's compelling. You're underselling your math skills. <laughs> uh, don't tell my family that. <laughs> so circling back to something that you said there, I was going to ask you a question about, okay, I get the strategic alliances. You know, it's, it's car wash service. So I get the alliances like, like you have with Hertz and BMW. The strategic alliances that you have globally with the groups like Apple and Facebook and Amazon, that's about that second of the three revenue streams, right? That's about the time-starved employees that are working for large organizations that have some kind of covered parking where this service can come to them. It is, absolutely. Okay. Corporate locations are constantly looking for benefits for their employees. How do you make their life better, easier, faster, more convenient? Mm -hmm. Um, So, especially right now when the competition is fierce for good employees. And, and we have the advantage of our app. So let's say we landed uh, a a corporate or or a fortune 500 company that had 3000 employees in in a particular territory. Uh Well, even if they weren't back to work right now, uh, we can still market to those employees and take our service to their home. So we can still offer all of our detailing services, whether those employees are going into the location or their corporate office, um, or just through our on-demand, uh, go out and, and while they're working at home, we can uh, detail their car while they're working. So it, it's a nice advantage that we can do both, either set up shop where they're at or come right to their uh place of their home where they're right, working at home. Right. Where they are, where so, they're recording a podcast. <laughs> correct. That's right. <laughs> what else should we know about this? You know, uh, a lot of questions I get around, how do we find locations? What kind of corporate uh-huh. support do we have? And a lot of emerging brands, cause we're, we're a new brand in the United States. That's where you kind of see they fall a little short, right? They they don't have a, a history and revenue built up to bring mm-hmm. in the support side. But keep in mind, this started in 2007 and has a, a lot of history behind it. And where I think we really shine is how we help franchisees find locations. Um, it's not just you in your market trying to find where's the mall I'm going to go into or where's the next location I'm going to set up shop. We have a national account manager that's working these national accounts constantly. Uh, A lot of our franchisees, we've already got the relationship built with three or four major players before they even sign their contract. Yeah. So they come in uh, on board and we're like, hey, here's four A plus locations. We need you to go talk to right away. They've been waiting for you. This is yours to lose. (laughs) Yeah. Go get it. Right. They're they're waiting for you to come in. So, um, people have really appreciated the level of support no HCO is, is bringing to the table Yep. Uh, and how well they've thought through h- how an owner should spend their time and how we can help them uh, land those, be- those prime locations. Gotcha. Yeah. And for clarity, the name is no H2O. <laughs> yes. Ah. <laughs> That's the franchise business we're talking about here. That's right, fine. Yeah. Right. Kept everybody on pins and needles. Right. So if you want to learn more about this, reach out to us. As you know, this podcast is powered by FranNet of the Heartland, so you can hit us on email at bmartin at frannet.com or just give us a buzz, 402-415-3651, or, of course, just look us up at frannet.com. Mike Sampson, we're going to have to wrap it up. I could ask you a million more questions about this, but I do look forward to talking with you more about it, and I truly appreciate you being with us today. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Thanks for the time. Absolutely. That's a wrap for this podcast of the Heartland Franchise Guy. Thank you again to Mike Sampson for joining us, and thanks to all of you for listening. We'll see you again soon. A Huda Media Production.